Please. Not long after granting North Dakota statehood, the United States government took land from another nation. The Pembina Band of Chippewa lost some 10 million acres of land through a treaty that compensated the First Nation 10 cents per acre, roughly $3 today. And that wasn't the last attempt at diminishing the tribe's land base. Renee Cooper recounts the history of the Chippewas in the Turtle Mountains through the eyes of tribal elders who remember it like it was yesterday. My name is Tom Davis. That is my English name. My Anishinaabe name, Oshkapinus, means young thunder. Over tea, literature, and a home-cooked meal, Tom Davis and I walked through the trials of his people and his elders. One quarter of the state that they took from my people, they put us here and when they put us here, it was at the point of a gun. We were not allowed to leave. By 1904, the land of the Turtle Mountain Band of Pemina Chippewa, led by Little Shell, was reduced to a six by 12 mile tract of land in a place and culture where land means everything. Those lands make billions of dollars nowadays, which we don't get no share of. My people have helped develop those potato farmers and sugar beets. They worked there all their life. My father, my mother, I picked potatoes by hand in my lifetime. In the early 1950s, they were farming just enough to survive when Congress called for the immediate termination of multiple tribes, including the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa. I heard my grandma and my grandma cried to my grandpa, Tom they could stay in Anakwa. Where are we gonna go now? It was testimony that ultimately dropped the tribe from the termination list. But around that same time, the U.S. government was taking drastic measures to assimilate Native people. They were trying to kill the Indian and save the man. They sent us to San Francisco, California. I have never experienced in my life such a cultural shock. In those days, this was a racist place to be. I mean, the reservation was like a haven from everything else going on around. I remember my mom going to the meat market in Roulette, and the Indians had to go to the back door and buy the soup bones. Bernice DeLorme was in and out of white foster homes, to an orphanage, to a boarding school in Wapaton. You know, if, if the girls ran away, they had to wear this old beat-up dress, this green dress. And they put a big tear in it, like right where your breast was or right where your butt was. There was a railroad track behind the school. And little kids used to go out there and just lay down on the railroad track, just wait for the train to come. DeLorme went on to be the first in her family to go to college. She eventually earned four degrees. Tom, too, went to college and raised his kids as a single father. Never to let that happen to one of my children their children. He was the tribal planner for three decades for a nation still ravaged by poverty. Although the land base is small, the Turtle Mountain Reservation is home to about 33,300 people, making it one of the most densely populated reservations in the country. And Davis says 68% of his tribe lives on less than $8,000 a year. It's because of the hopelessness and despair that is put upon us. We could lose what we have as a people. The only thing that keeps us here is our land base. We don't want nobody infringing upon our rights to self-government. If you do, you're going to have exactly what you had, what I explained. And us old people that live that life here know, know that. Reporting for KX News in the Turtle Mountains, Renee Cooper. Davis and DeLorme add tribal leadership has changed over the years. DeLorme says elected leadership in the Turtle Mountains today is left representative and less rooted in cultural values. Davis says their leaders ended up following the money rather than the will of the people, adding that funding does not give the state the right to tell tribal citizens what to do.